So we looked at a bunch of complex identities before. It was not just for fun. It was, we're going to about, about to use complex roots. So before we do that, we're going to do one more uh, example with <coughs> repeated roots. These will be real roots, but repeated. And what you see is your next repeated root shows up right here. So repeats appear with increasing powers of x's. So if we had a root repeated four times, so if m equals a is repeated four times, what we would get is yc equals b1. I'm copying the what's at the very top of the screen right now, b1 e to the ax. So that's the standard uh, one that we would get. And we would get b2 x e to the ax. That's the order two term. Now the order th the third term, we would just get x squared e to the ax. And then the next term, x cubed e to the ax. You get increasing powers of x, basically. So we have a constant um, in the front, and then we have a linear, quadratic, and cubic like that. So if you went up to fifth repeat, you would just have another one in the pattern right here. You can absolutely factor out e to the ax, and you're left with b1 plus b2x plus b3x squared plus b4x cubed. And you could think of this as basically a uh, nth degree polynomial with uh, undetermined coefficients. That's another way to think about this uh, situation. So of course, this example will have repeated real roots. So we're going to solve this one. We have a fourth derivative, y, fourth derivative minus 3y second derivative. plus 2y first derivative equals 0. So same first step as before, let y equal e to the mx. So test out your algebra skills now and see if you can solve this. There is no third degree or third derivative and there's no zero derivative. So be careful about your derivatives right here. There's a fourth a second and a first derivative, but no third or zero. So I'll give you a head start. It's a derivative, not a power. Oh, okay. I think it's probably been two weeks or three weeks since I talked about notation, and we haven't seen anything past like a second derivative, so I don't think I've used this notation yet this quarter. Yeah. You could write y prime 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 like I'm about to, like I'm writing here, but you can see really quickly on the left, it's getting really ugly. Yeah. If I was going past four, I would. That would be in completely ridiculous. some algebra ideas. 
Or any any substitution questions before we get to the algebra? So we're just using zero product property here. What can I do algebraically to this last uh, equation? Oh, you pull out an M. So we factor the M out. That gets us at least to a cubic. Now we got a problem. How in the world are we going to factor this? Using that thing we didn't forget. <laughs> <laughs> so rational zero theorem. <laughs> so we're going factors of the constant divided by factors of the invisible one in front of m cubed. Classic. I'm pretty sure I wrote down rational zero theorem already. Yep. But I'll write it down again. And let's give this polynomial a name. I'll call it P of M. Actually, I'll call P of M will be without that multiply by M. So P M will be M cubed minus three M plus two. So my zeros, potential zeros, potential at all. Potential. So it's just 2 over 1 and 1 over 1. So it's plus or minus 1 or 2. And it looks like 1 is the winner. Say one is the winner, I'll say the winner. Yeah, one's the winner. Uh, so m is one. Now what we're going to do is take that and turn it into a factor. So this is the correspondence theorem you also did not forget from pre-calculus one class. So m equals one means m minus one is a factor. So every zero of a polynomial corresponds to a factor. So now all we're going to do is divide. We're going to divide our cubic by m minus one. So our cubic is m cubed. There is no m squared, so I'm writing this plus zero m squared minus three m plus two, and we're doing long division. It's been a while since we've done that. Yeah. So we got m squared times m, m cubed minus m squared. Make sure you're subtracting. So we got m squared minus 3m plus m. That's m squared minus m. And then we're subtracting. So negative 3 plus 1, negative 2, m plus 2, negative 2. 2m plus 2 subtract, and we better get remainder 0, and we do. So I'll write the pm factored right here. We just said it was m minus 1 times m squared plus m minus 2. So any questions about this rational zero theorem or long division? How are we going to factor that m squared plus m minus 2? What are some choices? m minus 2, m minus 1. So we can get lucky, just basically write down the way that it factors. There's quadratic uh, equation, which will give us the two m values that are the solutions, which we then turn into factors. Uh, or we can do complete the square, but I think just guessing on this one should work. So I need a two, two and a one. I need the bigger number to be positive. So 
So we got m minus 1 squared, m plus 2. All right, so that's P of m. So let's write down all of our m values. So we got m equals 1 is repeated twice. m equals negative 2, repeated once. What's the other m value? Zero. So we have to go way up to here, but up there you can see if m is zero, it's also a solution. So don't forget, m equals zero also appears once. All right, so we can write out the solution. So I'm just going <coughs> the singles first. So we got constants, we'll use b's, so we got b1 e to the 0x. Remember there is no think or no try, there's only do. So all I'm doing, somewhere way, way, way up here, so our solution looks like e to the mx. So that's all we're doing is basically adding up a linear combination of the e to the mx's. And when m is 0, it's just e to the 0. So that would just be a constant. So we got b2 e to the negative 2 x. Now our repeat. So we definitely get a b3 e to the now m is 1, so this one is just e to the x. When this repeats, we don't just get b4 e to the x, we get b4x e to the x. So we have that extra uh, term that comes in from the repeat. And this is our yc right here. Of course, e to the 0x is just 1, so you could leave your answer as b1, just that constant b1 plus all the rest. So that's really all there is to the uh, repeated roots. And now we're going to get into complex roots. Oh, let's put some constraints on it. How many initial conditions would I need to get all the constants out? Oh, four. Four. So I would need four initial conditions. So let's apply some initial conditions. So yc of 0 is 3. yc prime of 0 is negative 5. yc double prime of 0 is 15. And yc triple prime of 0, negative 19. All right, plug all these in and see what uh, constants you can get. Now, just to warn you, your derivative, you of course need chain rule, but what is your last term going to need on the derivative? Product rule. Mm -hmm. Don't forget the product rule. And your other derivatives are going to get worse because you have products. I mean, they're going to get that much worse. These conditions will be a little more time consuming to plug in than some of the other ones.
and make sure our derivatives agree. We took a derivative at the top of the board. Our first term should disappear because it's just constant b1. factored the uh, e to the x term out. This have a double prime? No, I haven't, I haven't even gotten the second derivative yet. That's oh, just... So now I'm going to use that derivative in the next, the y prime c initial condition. Oh, look at this. My writing's so sloppy. even notice till I zoomed in. <laughs> My one looks a whole lot like, oh, that even should be a zero, wow. I don't know what happened. Just got we got a lot of stuff there. <laughs> Alright, so I'm using that uh, derivative form that I just computed for this. So we got negative 2b2 plus b3 plus b4. The last term is going to be 0 because x is 0, not the exponent part, but the x coefficient. All right, now I need the second derivative. And I wish I had more room here. I'll do some magic, which you can't do. Nope. You're not special. I'm not special either. So I get 4b2 e negative 2x plus b3 plus b4 e to the x. Those are just constant coefficients, so nothing changes there. The last term is going to look like b4 e to the x plus b b4 x e to the x and just move that b4 into the parentheses we got b3 plus 2 b4 e to the x and while we are computing derivatives let's go ahead and compute the third derivative finish up our calculus here have negative 8b2 e to the negative 2x plus I'm going to skip a step here we're going to get b3 plus 3b4 e to the x plus b4 x e to the x so I just noticed that pattern basically I was moving a b4 into the e to the x term each additional derivative Alright, now I have all my derivatives. I'm ready to... I do, but I skipped... Where do we go? So basically what I noticed is this term got bumped up by one power each time. Or not one power, the one. coefficient went up by one. Because I basically grabbed another b4 from the product rule. So I just, on that last one, I just skipped that step. Alright, so any calculus questions plugging in these initial values? So 
that right? Because it has that X turn in front of the Yeah. Yep. That would be a big difference. All right. All right, so this looks kind of messy. Can one of you explain what we are looking at right here? System of four. Yep, so it's not just a system. I mean, it is a system of four equations and four unknowns, but this is actually a relatively friendly system. What it's type? So what type of a system is this? It's a linear system. So you got four equations, four unknowns. We could put it into a matrix and row reduce. So I think I've written out in increasing order. Usually I put my constants on the right side, not the left side. So I'm going to turn this into a matrix right here. I'm going B1 column. B2. Uh oh. Yeah, I just for it did lose connection for a second. I know you look back and I was ready back. Sure. <laughs> yeah, this core is getting old. I don't know how many more classes this is gonna last for. Alright, so I'm ready. One, one, one. There's no B4, so it's zero B4, and my constant is three. So I'm just taking this first equation and putting the coefficients into here, and I label my columns. And I'm doing the exact same thing for a second equation. So we got negative two. Uh oh, oh, what did I screw up already? That B1 term is zero. There is no B1 term. You do have to put a number in, and it's not two. <laughs> zero. zero. So we got zero. Negative two is the first non zero term, and then one, one, negative five. And now we have zero, zero, four, one, one, fifteen, and finally zero, negative eight, one, three, negative nineteen. Something that doesn't seem right with my. Yeah, I think that's the issue. Let's see. Yeah, there should be two B4 in my third equation. Unfortunately, when you're doing math, maybe it's a good thing, but nobody's looking over your shoulder for the most part. So you won't really realize you, aren't, you made this mistake until somewhere half an hour later and you're cursing at your computer screen. Or your calculus professor, either way. <laughs> All right, row reduce. Column one's already done, so we are doing column two. So use the one at the top and knock out everything else in that column. And I'll write the moves we need. We're plus two, row one, minus four, row one, plus eight, row one. Should I do the first step and then you guys do the other steps? so I can refresh you on what the actual operations are. It's been a, it's been a minute. <laughs> that was beers ago. <laughs> so first row we're not operating on, so first row we're just copying over. Now the second row is where we're taking two times the first row and adding it to the second row. So we got two, I'm looking at the first row on the left side, not the first row on the right side. So that first row that I put a box around, that two times one is two plus zero gives me a two. Now I do two times one plus negative two is zero. That was the reason I chose uh, two times the first row was to zero out that. Uh oh. What am I doing? Why is this counterproductive? Kind of. Yeah, that first column was all perfect, and now I'm filling it up with not zero. Yeah. All right, so I'm doing this to show you what not to do. 
That's not the right one. I am supposed to clear out column two. What should I use to clear out column two? So use one of the other three rows. What is the best number in column two to use? Can't use the one. One's always the best, but we can't use it because of that one right there. It screws everything else in column one up. I could use the four, but I don't want to use fractions. The two is good because it multiples, integer multiples of two are going to cancel out the other two rows. So I could use the four or the eight, but then I'd be going into like halves or quarters at that point. This way I'm using multiple, like, you know, two times negative two is negative four, that cancels out. So we're going to use that second, uh, the second row. So let's get rid of all of this. I'm not going to worry about canceling the one at the top. I'll, I'll do that at the very end if I need to, but the reason is I don't want to go right into fractions. I don't really like them, so I'm going to avoid them as long as possible. So I got plus two, row two, and now mm, minus four, row two. That would give me positive eight, yeah. So any questions on those two, the reasons behind those two? That should be canceling out column two. All right, so row two is gonna just get copied. I could multiply row two by one half, but then I'm gonna screw up. I, I have all my other numbers are odd, so they're all gonna turn into halves if I multiply by half. All right, so perform this operation. So we're adding two times negative two plus four is zero. Two times one is two plus one is three. And two plus one is three. And negative 10 plus 15 is five. Now zero. Positive eight minus eight is zero. Negative four plus three is negative one. Negative uh oh, that negative one shouldn't go there. That should go in the fourth column. Now we got negative four plus one is positive negative three. And now negative four times five is positive 20 minus 19 is one. All right, so any questions on this matrix right here? So I'm only gonna write the operations to do next. I want you to actually perform them. Uh, column one, there is, or column two still has an extra one in it. We'll get that out at the very, very end. So all I'm doing right now is getting that lower triangle to be zero. So we're almost there. How do I get rid of that last negative three? So we're just gonna go plus row three. So do that right now. And then you're going to have a one, hopefully something you can turn into a one, and then you're going to go clear out column four. And go ahead. Yeah, that's the only, only row four is going to change on this move. Only which row? Only row four is going to change. I'm going to draw this in a snake pattern. So I'm going to go this direction. I'm going to go down and then to the left. All right, well, we will zoom out and go to the right. Yeah, but I think the wider I make it, the slower my computer runs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the more I write on one page, the slower the computer runs as well. I don't have two, two issues. Yeah. So 
this is a pretty long section. And if I start using the cool colors, it uses a huge amount of memory. Even though they like give them to me permanently now. If I start using them, it doesn't work well. Yes, if you use what you want, you won't be happy. Yeah, my i5 is good enough, fourth generation, it works. Okay, so any questions on this matrix? One thing you should notice, my fourth column and my third column are not lined up well. Looks like I'm an 11 in my row two. I know I don't have an 11, but if I came back tomorrow, I may treat that as an 11. All right, now what we're going to do is clear out column four. Oh, before we do that, mm -hmm. what can I multiply the very last row by? Mm -hmm. Let's go with a one half here. I'm well, I'm not going to have fractions. So I can already tell B4 is 3. So that last row tells me the B4 coefficient is 3. But I'm not going to write that down until the very end. So now I want to clear out everything else in column 4. The good news is, at this point, I waited until we were here so that I would have a 1 to do so. So I won't have to go to fractions. So we got a minus, <coughs> on row two, I have a minus row four. And on row three, how many row fours do I want to add or subtract? So then do I want to add three or subtract three? Subtract. All right, so do these two operations. That should clear out column four. And then there's only two more that you have to worry about. I'll highlight them here. That's too much highlighting. Well, you're wrong if you got different numbers now. Which <laughs> 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 on, on the last row, I had gotten at the uh, at one and a two in the last row, and in the third row, I have a three, four, five. Two. So what sh should I go step? We'll call that like one, two, three, four. What step am I looking at? Yep. On the third row, wouldn't that be 4, 1, 2, 50? Oh, no, yes. Oh, that's I changed it on the, I changed it in the coefficient. Oh, no. Now we're going to have to follow through. Which would just make that 3, 4, 5. So that goes 3, 4, 5. And then I didn't do anything to it, so that mistake isn't super. Good thing I didn't screw up row one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Be erasing everything. All right, so three, four, five, and then four, four which is also going to change that guy. So that should be a minus four. Row four. Oh no. Oh, because we used. Yep, right here. Alright. So we did plus row 3. So it should be 4 plus 1 is 3. That should be a 3, 6. Which means multiply by a third. is acting very weird right now. There it gives us a 1, 2. We would have had a perfectly fine wrong answer. I don't know if 
you never know how bad it, things will get when you let a mistake survive. Alright, I think we should be on the right track here, and, I, and that shouldn't mess up the numbers that we had written down here. You should be able to infer that. Wait. There, four. Okay, now I can infer that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it should be a one. <laughs> it's like, how can I infer that? There's no four or three. <laughs> All right. So I think we're on the we're on the same page now. So I'm gonna give you two minutes to finish this off, and I'll come around and answer any questions you got if you're stuck or if you think you're done, you can bring your answers back to your original four equations and check. It should be pretty small numbers, pretty fast to check. Gerbil. That's what that sounds like. A very thirsty gerbil. <laughs> That's extra funny because he couldn't laugh. <laughs> they have that little straw and they're like, the little air bubbles go up. <laughs> Obviously, if Dribble drank that much water that quickly, I would stay away from it. <laughs> it's probably the size of a deer. <laughs>
Um, I probably wouldn't put this on a quiz because it just takes so long, but these are things you need to... A part of this is refreshing uh, your skill set, basically. I mean, I could say oh, I taught it to you one time and therefore you should remember it forever, but I don't think it's reasonable. And it's like anything else, if you don't practice on a regular basis, you're going to forget it. If I went back to English 102, I probably would not be getting an A, for example. Even though I've been practicing speaking all the time. <coughs> So minus root of three, so we have four. Zero. Zero. Oh no, there is a fraction that slipped in here. I thought everything was computed already. Oh, thank gosh. Zero zero one zero negative one zero 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 one two. All right, last up, get that last one out of there. Go multiply by negative one half. There is back substitution is another option. That's very reasonable to take here. But I don't want to reteach all of linear algebra, so I'm just going row reduction all the way. Oh, this is well, good. End of the class is over. Oh. Yikes. <laughs> I was gonna say one. Something really weird is going on right now. So it should go one. All right, minus row two. We should be done after this. Zero, minus row two gives me a one. Zero, one, zero, zero, three. Zero, zero, one, zero, negative one. Okay, so rewriting the equations, B1 is one, B2 is three, B3 Three is negative one. B four is two. So this is an extreme example. Each condition revealed one constant, but it wasn't until I had all four conditions plugged in basically at the same time before I could actually even get my first coefficient um, out of here. So this is an example where you basically needed all four conditions to even get the first uh, constant out of here. Uh, you plug them back in and then you're done. So somewhere up here, you just plug the values that we just got back in and that'll be your answer. And so there's two ways you could check your B values work in your equation that's in your system here. And then you can check that your final, final answer satisfies your original ODE, which is somewhere above on the screen with a fourth derivative. So a few different places you can check along the way.